Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week we will be looking at the RP2040 support in the Arduino IDE, that is the Raspberry Pi Silicon. A lot of people have been waiting for it and it's come from an unusual source. We also have a whole load of fantastic projects to get through and a short funding website thing. So with all that to get through, let's get going. We're going to start this week's show with the RP2040 Arduino IDE integration, which is very exciting, but before we go on, a little quick housekeeping. I know you get barraged with this stuff all over YouTube, but three simple free ways you can support the show is by clicking subscribe, which shouldn't change your day-to-day -day usage of YouTube at all, you will just be one of our subscribers, um, or you can do that and click the notification bell, which will notify you whenever we put a new video out on the channel. Realistically, we only put out one video per week on a normal week, and that is this show. Um, and as well as you getting a notification, it notifies YouTube that you really want to see the show as soon as it comes out. Finally, I know you get asked to mash that like button by everybody, and I find it as annoying as you do, but clicking like not only lets us know you like the show, it also lets YouTube, and hopefully will let YouTube show more and more people this show, because at the end of the day, I think all of us want this show to grow. I hope you do. I know that I do. It's the highlight of my week to do this. Right, enough of that. Raspberry Pi RP2040, Raspberry Pi's own silicon in the Arduino IDE. It's working, but not from an official source, and that's kind of interesting. And here it is, Arduino Pico is RP2040 support in the Arduino IDE. From the second the Pi Pico was announced, I know a lot of people were wondering how quickly this would happen and where it would come from, but it didn't come from Raspberry Pi, it didn't come from Arduino, it came from Earl Philhauer. Now, that's a name I may once again be mispronouncing, I do that a lot, sadly, but I did recognize this name, and that is because I have used this man's work before. He is the person behind the ESP8266 audio library, which makes uh, decoding and using audio files very, very uh, easy with an ESP8266, something that I have, have, of course, messed around with. If you know me and know the show, you know that I'm very into using microcontrollers and music and sound. Um, but this is something very different. This is simply a support for RP2040 boards, and it is actually pretty fully featured already. So uh, you add this board a very similar way that you would add uh, ESP8266 boards, for example. You um, add um, a JSON link to the additional board manager URLs. Um, you can add it alongside anything you already have there. You just comma space and it will just uh, add it to the list. You don't actually have to delete and do it again. That's something that someone mentioned to me once. Um, and you can use it very similarly as you would any other normal board on the Arduino IDE. Uh, behind the scenes, it's doing all of the rigmarole that's required to make the Pi Pico or any RP2040 uh, chip uh, board work with the file system and moving the UF2 file over. On the surface, though, you just choose it from the menu as usual and press upload. And it works with, uh, I think, 1.8.x versions of the Arduino by, uh, IDE and the beta 2 version. I've only tried it in the new Arduino uh, beta and works kind of out the box flawlessly, no issues. It's really brilliant. And I know a lot of us have been waiting for this and it is here. Uh, the RP2040 now works with the Arduino IDE and once again, it's come from the community. So I'll leave a link to this GitHub page in the description of the video, which has everything you need in order to get it installed and instructions on to how to use it. Now, this show generally fixates on one product at a time, which is fine if you just want to hear me waffle about what I think about whatever I'm looking at that week. But sometimes you might want to know uh, what is the best in class, as it were, for a particular kind of thing. So these next two sections are about that exactly. We're starting with CNX software and a roundup of the best ARM development boards you can get, and then moving over to electromaker.io for my colleague Mo Long's article about the best x86 uh, single board computers you can get. And beginning with CNX Software, barely a week goes by that I do not sing the praises of this website. It is fantastic. And just to remind you, they do have a Patreon account if you want to support them. Um, now, the five most powerful ARM SBCs and dev kits in 2021. Um, it really isn't lying when it says the most powerful ones. And also some of the most expensive. Uh, this top one, the Snapdragon 888 Mobile Hardware Development Kit, is probably the best SBC you can get if you want to develop for mobile platforms. It's also going to set you back uh, several thousand, I remember, if I remember correctly, $1,349. Uh, full development kits with the display and camera board goes for around $2,600. That's possibly the most expensive single board computer I've ever seen. But there are a few familiar faces on this list as well as the AG, AGX Xavier uh, from the Jetson line from NVIDIA and a few others that you might find familiar. Um, but yes, uh, I wanted to just give this a shout out because uh, it's nice that there are so many lists of kind of your cheap hobby SBCs that you can get. Um, it's very rare you find one which is uh, just across the board aimed at the very best regardless of cost and price. If you're interested in what the best ARM boards are you can get at the minute in 2021, um, yeah, this article is a good place to start. 
But ARM is not the be-all and end-all when it comes to single-board computers. A couple of months back, my colleague Mo Long wrote an article um, about the best x86 single-board computers you can buy, and there are a number of possible advantages for having an x86 single-board computer. The first, of course, being that if you are familiar with Windows and would rather use a Windows system other than Linux, you can. Uh, the other being that uh, rather than a mini PC, which usually is just a PC, as it were, um, many of these have things like GPIO pins. Many of them have microcontrollers built in, like the Atmel uh, AT mega 32u4 which is the one that's in the arduino leonardo and the micro um it's the hid compliant little uh, arduino chip which means that you could run arduino code natively on the board uh, many times using arduino shields um, and it's all built into the one single board very handy and this article, as well as being a nice rundown of the best x86 boards you can get, it also gives a little bit of context as to the differences between them, um, ARM and uh, x86, x64, um, everything that you would need to know in terms of the differences between them before you make your decisions. And it, of course, covers some of the best, along with the Udo Bolt, which is, uh, as it says here, probably one of the more ma uh, powerful maker boards at the time of review. This is a ETA Prime review. We never go a week without mentioning his name. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other interesting boards on this list as well, along with the Latte Panda, which made a big splash a little while ago and the odyssey board and if i come down far enough there is the udo x86 board and i keep saying udo it's udo isn't it um either way uh, this one i find especially interesting and i will be writing a longer piece on it quite soon for electromaker i'll be sure to mention it when i do Anyway, if you are looking for a great rundown, uh, including all the specs of various x86 boards that you can get, um, uh, many of which have some features you won't find on a mini PC, this is where you should look, and I will leave a link in the description. We're sneaking in a very quick funding website things this week because there's not much time to fit it into the show, but I couldn't let this one go by without mentioning it. Now, if you wanted to use old televisions, which are beautiful old things, you can pick them up for nothing, um, in your projects, you'd usually have to use some kind of RF modulator, um, and you can actually uh, talk straight out of an ESP8266 to an NSTC monitor, NTSC monitor. Um, Charles Law has done that in a fantastic video, that's for another day. But um, this is a severely cool way of doing it. And if I sound overexcited, it is because I am. This is a way of using a Pi Zero. Um, it's a hat for a Pi Zero to output directly to old school televisions and displays. Um, it is a tiny little RF modulator that sits on top of a Pi Zero. And as their beautifully stylistic pre-launch video shows, um, it is a quite beautiful little thing. The uh, absolute same size as a Pi Zero. It has that similar to Adafruit Feather form factor, although of course they're not identical. Um, and the RF output there that will turn any old television, any old screen into a uh, project box for your Pi Zero. If you were wanting to build a very old school arcade machine that didn't run anything fancy or new, using a proper old cathode ray telly, you can now do that um, with it all inside the one box. Uh, it's a fantastic project. It is pre-launch, and we will be coming back to it. Mystery box competition. That's right, we're going back to a classic mystery box competition this week. This is a box of mystery, as it says here, provided by the wonderful people at Mauser Electronics, as it says here. And the basic thing is I dip my hand in it, and whatever I pull out, I give away as a prize. And this week... We have a USB 2 kit. That's that Atmel thing, isn't it? <laughs> it says Atmel on the back. Yes, uh, let's have a look at this. So, as always, I'm going to be a little bit nosy and have a look inside the box. Um, USB Key 2, as far as I remember, is a development kit for general USB protocol things based on the Atmel chipset. Now, I could be remembering this wrong, but... Uh, ooh... As always, I got majorly distracted. Um, the board itself here is in a little static uh, case, so I'm not gonna take it out, um, and I don't need to. You can see it uh, in the official documentation right here, albeit it is a black and white photo. Uh, now this is a little uh, Atmel uh, development board, so it's an AVR controller. So. I know what you're thinking, it's kind of Arduino-esque, and it is in a way, although this is going way more down to the bare bones. You will be using Atmel Studio to program this, I'm sure there probably is implementation for the Arduino IDE out there, but this thing is kind of interesting, because as well as all of the ports you can see here, um, and this is uh, the same nomenclature you'll be more used to if you've looked at the uh, uh, bare metal series I've always been harping on about by Mitchell Davis, this is uh, port B and port C connectors and all that kind of stuff rather than your normal GPIO ports, it also has a uh, five or six axis joint stick on board, a temperature sensor on board, a battery circuit on board, and it has a USB programmer, although you can also program it using JTAG, JTAG as well. 
Um, so yes, I, I, I got completely lost looking at the uh, page here, going through all of the different application uh, versions and example code that there is. Um, and if you've ever done any AVR work before, it will be quite familiar to you. And there is, of course, this very useful data sheet as well. Anyway, that's a lot of waffling. Um, this is a super cool little thing that I previously did not know existed until today. And uh, I'm sure one of you out there will be wanting to fiddle with it and make it do interesting things. Um, I'm having interesting ideas. No, no, okay, let's choose a prize winner. And our winner this week is Steve Karminski, or Karminski, I apologize if I've mispronounced your name, um, who quite rightly mentions that the ESP32M1 might not be legal in uh, your country uh, because of the uh, output power. Um, and yeah, it's something that I completely failed to mention during the coverage of it. So if you do plan to get it, maybe check up on that before you do. Anyway, congratulations, Steve. This little Atmel development kit will be on its way out to you. We'll be in touch as to how we can get your address. Uh, the mystery box competition will continue. Every comment left on a video enters you to the competition, apart from on those weeks where we're going to be doing those special giveaways like we did last week. But for now, let's get on with the rest of the show. We're going to finish out this week's show with a few projects and YouTube videos I found interesting this week, beginning with Big Clive, who I'm sure needs no introduction for many of you. But for those of you who may not be familiar, Big Clive is the undisputed king of taking stuff apart and reverse engineering them on the internet, um, and is a seemingly a very lovely and definitely a very funny man to boot. Um, he has a second channel called Big Clive Live. Some of you who already know who he is might not know that. His streams are the thing of legend. But this video is looking at a, as it says, a tiny 12 volt radio remote receiver. Um, the little black box you can see there, which contains a receiver and a microcontroller and a relay, which uh, can work with a variety of different switches. And as you would expect from any Big Clive video, he shows it working before taking it apart and reverse engineering the circuitry. Um, and uh, the verdict here, spoilers, is it's pretty good. Um, for the money, you get a lot out of these little things. Um, and I also thought it was worth mentioning because I feel like these little radio remote uh, receivers with relays in them are things that sometimes get left by the wayside in making your own smart home stuff. Yeah, it's very easy to rig up an ESP8266, which is always polling the internet, um, but these things use remarkably small amounts of power. Um, and as you can see, none of the switches on the table there are connected to any kind of power source, and that's because the batteries in them last a very, very long time. And remember, if you do want to use this in uh, uh, accordance with some kind of Wi-Fi smart home system, there's nothing to stop you using the relay on the radio transmitter to trigger uh, uh, or to sense a pin on your microcontroller. Um, you're doubling up microcontrollers there, but who's counting? So on the very off chance you weren't already familiar with Clive's channel, uh, this is Big Clive, um, a very, very interesting channel. It will teach you a lot about electronics. Um, he is a very, very knowledgeable guy, a little bit more knowledgeable than he lets on in his videos. And usually both the description and the comments are full of interesting uh, information as well. Uh, in this one, uh, it gives you a full uh, um, tutorial as to how you can use this. So if you didn't want, even if you didn't watch the video and you had one of these little things, you could find that out from there. He also includes a link to what he thinks might be uh, the microcontroller in it, uh, the data sheet here. Um, and as mentioned before, the comment section is usually full of quite interesting stuff as well, because for someone who has spent so many years taking things apart on the internet and showing quite a lot of knowledge, he has attracted a wonderful community full of engineers and generally interesting people. Now, drilling a hole is the act of taking a solid object and suspending a hole into that object using a mixture of engineering, high impact machinery and witchcraft. So thank goodness for Bitlooney who is here to teach us how to drill a hole. The video takes you through all the essential parts of drilling a hole, including the spiky bits you need to put in the wood, drills and their different orientations, you need to buy several drills because some of them only go in one direction, and of course how to press a drill. The 20 minute video really is essential viewing, because while I have managed to suspend holes in objects before, I never actually managed to do it with any degree of success. In fact, every time I felt like I punched a hole in an object before, I've actually only dented it before having to go outside, take a walk, have a stiff cup of tea, and reevaluate my life. <laughs> okay, um, this is this is Bitlooney's April Fool's video for this year. Uh, I wanted to avoid doing too many April Fool's things on the show because a lot of it is rubbish. This is fantastic, hilarious, um, a 20 minute video on how to drill a hole. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just watch this video, you will not regret it. I like to believe that the bandage was actually needed because he managed to hurt himself making this video. Anyway, moving on to something which is not an April Fool and is in fact a incredibly detailed project that you can find on the Electromega website. Um, you've probably seen this doing the rounds because it made a bit of a splash. This is a DIY super smart chessboard which uses a Raspberry Pi in order uh, to allow you to play chess against the computer or remotely with someone else with a similar board over the internet. 
Now this project actually conjures up some memories for me because uh, I learned to play chess against a little chess computer. Now it was nowhere near as smart as this. It was a chessboard where all of the uh, different tiles were buttons and you moved the, the pieces by going bip, bip, and then the computer would tell you where it would like its piece move to and you go bip, bip and do it and it would had a rudimentary chess brain in it which wasn't fantastic but that was useful for me as a younger boy to be able to learn the rules of chess. Now I know that my old chessboard could not have costed much, um, but the benefit of this is that it probably costs even less in parts than my old chessboard did all those years ago, while being way, way smarter, and of course, a fantastic project to sink your teeth into. But yes, all of the uh, STL files for printing are here, along with how to do all of the electronics, there is a wiring diagram, and there is also a YouTube video you can watch which takes you through the whole process as well. This is one of the most impressive projects I've seen in some time. Um, I love chess and I love yeah, the idea of having an electronic chessboard. Making it Wi-Fi and making it pairable so it works with other people from anywhere else in the world is just such a wonderful concept. A difficult one to crack, but one that this uh, project appears to have done very, very well. Now, the Nintendo Switch is arguably the best handheld console that you can get at the minute. It's certainly the only one that I've been tempted to buy, but realistically I'm not really a handheld or even a consoles person. I mean, I have a PC, several Raspberry Pis and several Arduinos and not enough time. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't really got one thus far. Um, but I might change my mind if I could get a Switch that was, well, this big. Partially because I could use it as a television and partially because it is incredibly cool. This is a completely functional massive switch which has uh, the Joy-Cons on the side as you can see and it is on the Arduino blog as you can see as well because it uses Arduinos in order to attach all of the buttons and make it all work. And as you can see here, it is 70 inches by 30 inches. I'm not sure what that is in uh, centimeters, but large, I think we can fair to, uh, fairly say if you look at the images here. Um, and you can see exactly how it all fits together under here. But if you would like the more detailed approach, um, head to the uh, Arduino blog uh, uh, link that I will leave in the description of the video, and then head to the YouTube video, which shows you the full build process and how it works. There is a, yes, Mario Kart, Mario Kart, and of course the build montage. Um, but look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just find it wonderful. Uh, again, we don't even own a television. It's something I may have mentioned on the show before. If this could be my television, I might be tempted. Anyway, this is a fantastic project from a maker I had previously not heard of. Um, Michael's channel still has several thousand subscribers, but it's still quite small. Um, I, I suggest going and subscribing if you want to see more things like this. Um, and uh, yeah, just... I, Again, I say this many, many times in many different ways, but uh, taking a, a thing and then turning it into a bigger or older or newer version of that thing using microcontrollers and Raspberry Pis is something I truly love, and this is no exception. It has just been Easter, and this year I had the great pleasure of, for the very first time, taking a child to the park to search for Easter eggs that we had surreptitiously hidden. Um, and the Raspberry Pi blog also has some nice Easter fun with Raspberry Pi ideas. Um, and uh, there's several things on this blog post that um, are worth looking at, and I will leave a link to it in the description, but I want to concentrate on this first one, just because I think it is a fantastic idea. So this is from teacher Klaus Rabadeer, um, and uh, I, I may have pronounced that name wrong. I feel like I might be slightly closer to it, what with it being a German name, we'll see. Um, but it is a very complicated way to do something beautifully simple. This robot will draw on eggs, and here you can see it in action. Now it has, uh, as you can see, four potential colours, and it works by moving servos in and out, uh, moving the pens backwards and forwards, and there is the Raspberry Pi being used to control it all, along with a bunch of 3D printed parts and hobby servos. Another nice feature is a little preview here so you can see what the egg is going to look like once it is done and as you can see it gives a pretty nice result. There's also a link to an accompanying blog post here which is in German but uh, in short um, it just says that uh, the teacher uh, Klaus designed and made the robot and did some of the basic programming um, which allowed him then to teach his students about things like stepper motors and allowed them to also do some designs for the eggs and basically give them uh, an idea about how this machine works and of course come away with some beautifully drawn on eggs. Now, as I mentioned, that's not the only thing that's on the Raspberry Pi blog for Easter. There's a couple of other projects here worth looking at. So I'll leave a link just to the blog post in the description of this video so you can take a look yourself. Finally, on this week's show, regular viewer Jeff Wharton sent in a link to a Commodore 64 organ, which is a Commodore 64 that's been rigged up to sound like a church organ. Now, you know me if you watch the show and you know that's enough to get me excited as is. But before talking about it, I think it's important that we hear it. Now, amazingly, that sound is coming purely from a tone generator on the Commodore 64 and the spring reverb you can see in front of it. 
That sound is not a VST, that is not a sampled organ, that is a raw digital sound running through a reverb box, um, and it just sounds absolutely wonderful, doesn't it? Alongside that performance video, there is a video explaining uh, where this idea came from. Um, uh, this has actually been a long time in the making. The spring reverb tank comes from a project that was almost a decade old. There was also a write-up of uh, everything that video says as well. Um, and uh, uh, there's more going on than just the uh, spring reverb. Um, the button layout chosen came from a chromatic button accordion layout, um, something I've never actually had uh, familiarity with playing with. Although I've played a Melodeon before, I wonder what kind of similarities there are there. I mean, there's less notes on a Melodeon. Anyway, um, this is a truly wonderful project. Thank you so much, Jeff, for bringing it to my attention. Um, I will be coming back to this one and diving deep because I do actually have a couple of SID chips kicking about, but I definitely don't have the time to do this, do I? <laughs> As almost always, this is not just a singular fantastic project. This website is an absolute treasure trove of different things. I've, uh, as you can see, just dipped into a few little parts of the site and I already realize I'm going to be here for a very, very long time. That has been our show. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned near the start of the show, there are many ways to support this show. You can just like it and subscribe on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Also, if you're considering getting something for your latest project, maybe have a look at the electromaker.io shop. Um, but other than that, as always, I wish you a productive, fun and safe week and I will see you next time. <laughs>